as you uh, get that question written down, um, how many of you guys help with the dishes at your place? A good amount of people? Okay, well that's good. Well, why is it best for you to just do your dishes yourself instead of have someone next to you helping? Anybody know? That's true. It's, it's also extremely hard to stay in sync. <laughs> if you think that one's good, I, I've had a better response from the next one too. So, you ready for this one? This is a little bit darker. So, um, <laughs> yes. Why did the lion eat the tightrope walker? Why did the lion eat the tightrope walker? Any guesses on that one? Oh, it's deep. He wanted a well-balanced diet. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Well, yeah, because they have to balance, you know? Yeah. Well-balanced meal. Boy, this, uh, this day feels kind of weird, doesn't it? It's like Wednesday, but it sort of feels like a Monday, but not really. And we had like five feet of snow outside like two weeks ago, and now there's nothing there. How did the testing go yesterday? Okay. I, uh, how many of you guys did the ACT for your testing? Okay. So, I know, I, I was just about to vent about the science part because it doesn't really have science in it and it doesn't matter what you know about science to do well. I know, right? If you're going to do that, put it in the math section. Goodness. So, yeah. Well, at least you didn't have any homework that day. So, I'm going to vent a little bit more about something that annoys me. And that has to do with the question here. Let's say you're standing on a platform. You are standing on a small platform that moves with a constant velocity to the right. Then you jump straight up as high as you possibly can. What happens next? In the real world. And then you'd fall down and you wouldn't land on the platform. So here's the thing. I have nothing against you guys for thinking that. Because in every single video game or every single movie where this is happening, where there is your character going on this platform, maybe there's lava underneath. If you jump, what happens? And then you don't do anything else. The platform continues and you fall into the lava and you die. But that does not happen in the real world. In the real world, if you jump while a platform is moving, you're still moving at the same horizontal speed when you're in the air. Your horizontal speed doesn't change. So realistically, you'd land right back on top of that platform that you jumped from. But in every single game I've ever seen, that's not what happens. You have to like do weird stuff in the air to make sure you land on the platform again. When in reality, Newton's law and real physics says that you're going to land right on top of it again where you jumped from. So if you do happen to find a game where the physics is not off on that, please let me know. I would love to see that. Yes? But should you like slow down into the air resistance or not? If you're going real fast, you would. But if you're just jumping as high as you can and you're not in a hurricane, you will still land. It'll be negligible and you'll land there. So yeah, questions or comments on that? My heart and soul die a little bit each time I see that in one of my games. <laughs> Especially because I still play really old games um, more than new ones. I don't have any new systems. So on those side-scrolling games, this is a very common scenario. And you pretty much, you know, you have to jump up and you have to push over to land on the platform. It makes me cry on the inside. Okay. So, time for our review session. 
Believe it or not, the first three pages are multiple choice. The last page is the only page where you're going to be doing any sort of math or drawing and stuff. So let's talk about some possibilities for that multiple choice section. Um, but before we get to that, you do want to make sure that you have your formula sheet with you uh, because I'm not going to be putting them on the board. So make sure you bring that. Better yet, wear your physics shirts. Tomorrow's going to be nice and warm, kind of like today, not quite as warm, but a good day to wear your physics t-shirts. I'm going to bring mine in. Let's. Um, I'm going to say no for this time because some people didn't buy them, um, but I'm going to think of another way to get extra credit for everybody another time. So yeah, hold on to that thought. So, uh, how about this? When an object is falling, and we say that it is accelerating down at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. How fast does that mean it's moving after one second? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, negative 9.8 meters per second. How fast does that mean it's moving after two seconds? Well, not negative 9.8. It's going to be speeding up. 2 times 9.8, right? Yeah, and that's exactly it. When we say 9.8 meters per second squared, what we mean is that as an object falls, it picks up 9.8 meters per second every single second. So after 1 second, you're at 9.8. After 2 seconds, you're at 19.6. After 3, you're at whatever 3 times 9.8 is, uh, and so on. So that's, that's what that means. You need to know that. Um, so... If that's true, then, when you drop something um, and, like, after the first second, say it covers five feet, um, during the second second, will it cover five feet, more than five feet, or less than five feet? So if after the first second it covers five feet, how much area will it cover after the second one? The same distance? More or less? More, yeah, because it's moving faster. So, yeah, I just want to make sure you're aware. Don't let that, you know, tease your brain. Uh, sometimes the answers are, are obvious like that. So how about this one? If I throw an object upwards, and let's say I throw it up at exactly 10 meters per second, how fast is it traveling when it comes back down to my hand? Yeah, 10 meters per second. And if it's going down, if it was asking for a velocity, we'd say negative 10. But yeah, however fast you throw it up, it's going to be traveling that same speed when it comes back down and you catch it. Uh, so yeah, that's important to remember. I think you'll do so far uh, pretty good on the multiple choice. <laughs> I hope so. Um, what about this? How, how about um, if we have an object and it reaches the very top of its path? When it reaches the very top of its path, what would its velocity be? Zero. Zero. What would its acceleration be? Zero. Yeah. So we know the velocity is zero when it reaches the tippy top of its path. What is its acceleration when it gets there? It's momentarily turning around to go back down. That's kind of what your gut says. Um, and that's understandable, but it's wrong. Um, it is going to be negative 9.8, but I totally understand. Because, you know, it's at rest. It's like, how could it be accelerating? But you can be accelerating if you're changing direction, which is what's happening with, with the tennis ball. Uh, so, yeah, that is still going to be negative 9.8. If an object is in free fall, gravity will always be accelerating it down at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Whether that means it's slowing down on the way up, changing direction, or speeding up on the way down. Questions on that one? Okay. And again, when we're talking about these velocities, velocity can be positive or negative, but if we're talking about speed, that's only a positive thing. Uh, so you only have to worry about negatives if we're talking about velocities. Speed is always going to be positive. It's kind of like an absolute value thing. So how about this? I got two tennis balls, and uh, 
I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this so the camera sees it. There's an imaginary table underneath my hands. Everybody see it? Good. Okay. Two balls, equal mass, but they have different velocities when they reach the end of the table, which is right here. But you knew that already because you can see it. So here they go. So they left the same table with different velocities. Which one stays in the air longer? It's the same. Very good. Because regardless of how fast they're traveling, uh, gravity is going to pull them down at the same rate. So they'll spend the same amount of time in the air. Which one is going to land further from the table? The faster one, the slower one, or both? Faster one. Very good. Main thing with this, don't overthink things. Same scenario. I've got all sorts of tennis balls in here. Same scenario, but now we've got the objects moving at the same velocity, but clearly they are different masses. So here we go. Rolls off the edge of the table. Which one is going to hit the ground first? Same. same, exactly. Because it doesn't matter what mass you have, gravity is going to pull down at the same rate. Whether it's heavy or whether it's light, they'll spend the same amount of time in the air. How about distance? Which one lands further from the table? Well, on that one they have the same. The lighter one, perhaps? Or the same, maybe? So think of it like this. We, we just said they're both going to spend the same amount of time in the air, and they both have the same horizontal velocity. So yeah, it's going to be the same, because your distance is just velocity times time. So if they spend the same amount of time in the air, and they're moving at the same horizontal speed, they're going to land the same distance away. Last one. Do I have two more? No, I don't. But I have two baseballs. So, again, try not to overthink things. This one is on a lower table. This one is on a higher table. They leave those tables at the exact same time with the exact same velocities. What were the odds that was going to exactly hit the plug-in cord and unplug it. I don't know, anyway. So, which one is going to stay in the air longer, the higher one or the lower one? The higher one, absolutely. Which one's going to cover more distance, the higher one or the lower one? The higher. Yes, because the higher one's going to be in the air for longer, because it's higher up, and if they're moving at the same velocity, they're going to land at different places. The higher one that stays in the air longer will land further. Question so far? That's like the first three pages or so. Um, so yeah, happy spring break, huh? Thank you. <laughs> All right, now we actually do have to get to something where we're going to be doing some math. This guy has a massive head and tiny legs. This guy throws an object down at 12 meters per second. We know it takes two seconds to hit the ground. How high up did he release the ball from? Go. How high? Number one meter. Yeah, sure. Yep. You. You're welcome. Oh, I know.
Um, I would go through your homework. Uh, just do the best you can to be able to do those questions without looking at the answers. Um, especially worksheet one and worksheet three, I'd say. Otherwise, if you can do what we're doing up here today, that's a pretty good sign that you're in really good shape. for a change. <laughs> There's more than one way to do this. So if you're doing it a different way than the person next to you, that's just fine. Another minute or so, then we'll go through. Anybody brave enough to share what they came up with? 4.4? Not quite. 19.6? Nope. Okay, nope. Haven't heard the right answer yet. We're solving for the original height. Good thing we're going through this. I think I, I probably know what went wrong for those of you who got those smaller numbers. That's correct. Oh, see, look, you were right. I didn't say it. All right, let's go through this one together here. So we're looking for original height. So it's probably best we look at an equation that has original height in it. So final height is zero because we hit the ground. Original height is what we're looking for. Original velocity, what's that going to be? Zero. Negative. Zero. Well, it's going to be negative 12 because he's throwing it down at 12 meters per second. Yeah. See, I think I've trained you guys too much to like for the rolling table thing where the original vertical velocity is nothing. Yeah, it's a good thing we're doing this one. He's throwing it down vertically, so that means we do have an original vertical velocity here, and that's going to be negative 12. Yep. Very good. Yep. So one half times negative nine point eight is negative four point nine. And then two squared. And now we can solve this. The other thing I want to make sure that you're doing is even though it doesn't say negative twelve here, because he's throwing it down, you have to know that you gotta take that negative into account. So that negative does have to be in the equation. So if I move this y-o to the other side, it becomes negative, which would cancel out both of those negatives. 
So this is 24. I know that much. Uh, this is... Someone want to tell me what this number is? 19.6? Yeah, but when I move the YO to the other side, it cancels those negatives out. Or you could think of it as moving this whole thing to the other side, and it would cancel those negatives out. So yeah, that's where you get uh, 43.6. Questions on any part of this? Uh, so that's 1 half times negative 9.8, because acceleration is negative 9.8. Acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8 for objects that are in free fall on Earth here. Yep. Uh, there is an alternate way to do this. It's a little bit more work, but I'll show you anyway. So ultimately, what we need here is we need our change in height. So you could use... You could use this equation to get your change in height. The only thing is, you don't know what your final vertical velocity is. Yes? Sure. So you could use another equation to get your final vertical velocity. And you know all these values. So you could use this equation to get your vertical velocity, which you could plug in here, which would allow you to solve for your height, and then you could end up with your answer that way. So that's the two-step process. This is easier. It's a one-step process. So whatever. Yes? If you're just dropping it, then when zero it Yes, absolutely. OK, next one. Solve for horizontal velocity, please. How fast is the object moving when it leaves the table? We're looking for velocity. How fast is the object going? Yes, rolling horizontally. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, you'll have you'll have some decimals. You're not going to get round numbers. Alrighty, how many people? Well, first, anybody want to share their answer? Anybody confident? Laura? 6.67 is correct. How many people got 6.67? Yeah, that's what I like to see. Okay, let's take a look at this together then, make sure we're all on the same page. The first thing you need to know about this problem is you're looking for a horizontal velocity. So we have to go straight to a horizontal equation. This is our horizontal equation. This is the very top left of your motion box on your formula sheet. And just to the right of that, you've got the V version of this. Velocity is distance over time. We know distance, six. So now we gotta solve for time. If I wanna solve for time, here's one way of doing it. You can go back to this helpful equation. It's a very dependable equation. So final height is zero, original height is four, original velocity, what is this going to be? Zero, because this is a vertical equation, and vertically, when this ball rolls off the table, it has no velocity, because it's all horizontal. So this is zero, one-half times negative 9.8 is equal to negative 4.9, t squared. And we can use this to solve for our time. Four goes over there. The negatives all cancel out. And if I want to get rid of the square here, what I do is I erase it. But if I'm going to erase my square, I have to square it the other side, as I heard you say. So that time then ends up being equal to 0 0.904. And then you take that time, chuck it in here, take your distance, throw it in there, and you'll end up with the velocity of 6.67 meters per second squared, or just meters per second. <laughs> Questions on this one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I, um, on the answer here, I might have just rounded this to point 0.9. So. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. So 6.637 or 6.64 would be a more accurate answer. Yep. Okay. If you want to see an alternate way to do this, I can show that to you. If we want to solve for time, I would need an equation that has time in it. So this one does. So if I could use this equation to solve for time, I could get my answer the same way. Um, the only thing is, I do not know what the final vertical velocity is. Original vertical velocity is zero. Acceleration is negative 9.8. So if I can find my final vertical velocity, I can plug it in here and get time. The way you can get that vertical velocity is by using this equation. You know the change in height. It is negative 4. Acceleration is negative 9.8. Original velocity is 0. So you can use this equation to find your final velocity. Plug it in here to get your time. 
and then time would go in there and you could get your answer that way too. Uh, so yeah, no better or worse, you'll get the exact same answer, uh, but it is an extra step. So, Okay, last one, and you guys knew this was coming. The angle. It's here. Yes. No, we're just reviewing for it. The angle question will be the very last one on the test. <laughs> well, we'll go over it together. Nope. I'll tell you this, though. If you can do this, you'll be just fine on the test tomorrow for it. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to draw it more fully after I erase this, um, but here's the situation. You are 30 meters above the ground, which is a long ways. And this object is launched at 20 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal. My question, as you would probably guess, how far away is it going to land from the building here? Solving for horizontal distance. You've got three or four minutes to get as far as you can. I want to make sure we have time to go over this together. I got a butt stomp it. Oh yeah, that's the ultimate way. Yep. That's fine. Um, I usually run three digits, but on the right track. Yeah. Okay. And I don't do your and then you plug in the other
All right, let's go through this together. Um, if you didn't finish, that's okay. I just want to make sure we have plenty of time to, to plow through this. Uh, the number one, anybody, did anybody end up with an answer here? Yes. 48 is right on the money. Man, this is good. You guys didn't need this review session. We should have gone out to push my car. <laughs> I, I do promise we will do that. We will do that. So, Okay. Step one is this. We've got two kinds of equations, vertical and horizontal. So we need this velocity to be vertical and horizontal. And we figure that out by making a little triangle. So this here would be the velocity in the x direction. This here would be the velocity in the y direction. If you go through your sine and cosine, for the adjacent side, you will always be using cosine. So velocity in the x direction is going to be 20 times the cosine of 60. Thank you, Owen. Good to see you again. Stop by any time. Will do. I got him. <laughs> In the y direction. It's the same thing except for sine. If you want to see a step earlier than this, um, you can check out some of the videos on Schoology. I just want to make sure we get through it. But if you want just a quick short way to remember this, in the x direction, it will always be cosine. In the y direction, it will be sine. The x direction comes to 10 meters per second. The y direction comes to 17.3. So this would be step one. Step two, if we're looking for horizontal distance, we need a horizontal distance equation. And that's what this is. Now, what velocity is eventually going to go here? 20, 10, or 17.3? 10. 10, because this is a horizontal equation, so a horizontal velocity must go there. Very good. Now we've got to solve for time, though. And in order to solve for time, I would probably go back to dependable old y equation here. If you're not sure where to start, this one usually won't disappoint. Final height is 0. Original height is 30. Original velocity. What is my original velocity? Is it 20? No, but it's being launched at 20 meters per second. Why don't I put 20 meters per second here? Exactly. This velocity is both up and horizontal, as Gavin said. So what I need to do is I need to put my vertical original velocity here, which is 17.3. One half times negative 9.8 is equal to negative 4.9. And you've got yourself a quadratic. There's your A, there's your B, there's your C. And when you plug all of these in, you should end up with a time of about 4.8 seconds. So you put 4.8 seconds in here, you put your X velocity in there, and you're going to end up with, I believe, 48 meters. And that is how you do projectile motion. <laughs> you guys have a good day. If you want any extra practice, see me before school tomorrow or after school today. Wear those physics t-shirts. I <laughs> remember.